what's happening. It's Hal Wilkerson with Hawaii Property Advisors, and I want to say thank you for checking out our video today. This is something we're doing that uh, is really going to provide you with some valuable information if you're looking at buying a home here in Hawaii. Uh, I'm putting together sort of a weekly series, and this is uh, this week's webinar, Seven Things That No One Tells You Before You Buy a Home in Hawaii. And so without any further ado, let's jump right in. And so you can learn what the things are that nobody tells you when you buy a home in Hawaii. Now, real quick, I want to just invite you, uh, stick around to the end. We're going to take about 25 minutes or so here. And uh, I've got a special gift for you, uh, for those of you that stick around to the end. And uh, I can't wait to share it with you. All right. So what are some things that no one tells you about? First of all, Every island is not the same. Now, if you've come here as a tourist, and more than likely you have, you probably already have a little bit of a sense of that. But as you live here longer, the longer that you're in the islands, one of the things that you'll find is that sort of each individual island really has sort of a deep-seated sort of personality. And uh, I thought I would just do something fun here at the front of this. The first thing we'll do is let's talk about the different styles and different personalities of the islands. All right, so first off, let's start with Oahu. Oahu is where Honolulu is. That's where most folks land uh, the first time they come to Hawaii. Uh, what is unique about Honolulu or about Oahu? Oahu is the, it's called the Gathering Place, is actually the name of the island. And we actually have the highest population here on the island of Oahu. There's more homes, there's more inventory for those of you that are buying a property. In Hawaii but there's also more people obviously um, and it really has I would say Oahu um, aside from a few little minor distinctions is probably the closest that you would find that would embody the culture of uh, Hawaii mixed with sort of the US culture and you'll understand what I mean by that when we get to some of the other uh, islands because believe it or not some of the other islands actually have more of a mainland flavor than Oahu uh, for a few reasons now um, Anyway, so Oahu is the gathering place This is where you land if you're flying in for more than likely you're gonna land here in Honolulu and this is uh, Where you know, we have an almost a million people about 900,000 or so is the population right here on Oahu So let's before we go down the island chain. Let's go up to the top here and head over to Kauai. Kauai is called the Garden Isle, and Kauai is actually very well known for its green, uh, I mean, it's just, it's the wettest place, I think it's the wettest place recorded in the United States, it is going to be in one of these, uh, one of these um, rainforests up in the mountains. Uh, it's really known to be just incredibly beautiful, but it is very unique uh, Kauai is very unique to Hawaii. It's not like any of the other islands. Uh, they're very, how do I say this? Uh, Kauai is very proud of their own sort of style. And uh, if you were not from there, uh, you're more than likely sort of not going to be below the surface of sort of the tourist, you know, areas. If you're just coming in to stay in like an Airbnb or stay in one of the hotels, you're really not going to get a sense of uh, who they are, but during COVID, um, they actually did a very good job of keeping their case count like single digits pretty much, I mean, the entire time um, because they had such an incredibly stringent policy on, on people visiting. So they are very unique. They're very focused on themselves, I guess you'd say it that way. Um, and I, I obviously want to be a little delicate with the things that I say about each island because you know, every island sort of has its own flavor, but Kauai is probably the most of all of the main populated islands, meaning Kauai, Oahu, Maui, and Big Island. Um, those of those four more, sort of more popular islands, this one is probably the most closed of any of those four. Um, so that's, but it's the Garden Island. It's a beautiful place. There's beautiful people there. Uh, I love it, but they're very proud of their island and you don't find uh, a lot of folks that are moving to the islands that really are going to integrate into the community. You've got Mark Zuckerberg that has a place up on the North Shore. Uh, you've got uh, a lot of other really rich celebrities that sort of own estates 
there on Kauai, but as far as the community, uh, it's a very closed community as far as Hawaii goes locally. So that's Kauai. Uh, we do have Niihau, and Niihau is even more closed. You actually can't get to Niihau without an invitation. Uh, this was, there's a fascinating story around this island, but this island does, is actually owned by, I think it's the, uh, oh, I can't remember the name, it's an English family name, but um, at any rate, that one has only got a population of about 800 people, and you actually can't even visit Niihau without an invitation. And there's only one company that actually does tours, they'll do helicopter tours around it, and it's actually owned by the same, comp the same family that that uh, owns the island itself, and they pr produce revenue for the islands through those tours. So anyway, that's Kauai. Okay, so let's go down the chain. So we just talked about Kauai, we talked about Oahu. Um, you know, I I'll cover the four main islands, so, so Oahu, Kauai, and then let's go to Maui. Maui is personally my favorite island of all of the islands to, to vacation on, um, especially over here on West Maui in the Kanapali Lahaina area. And the reason is, is because the, the, the beaches are, are, oh my goodness, it's, they're so nice. They are, the waves, there's not a lot of wave action. There's um, the sunsets every night are just right here between Molokai and Lanai. You get this beautiful, like, you know, each side, uh, you, you can see it with the sunset, depending on the year, coming down right in between them. You see the, the, the dolphins, you'll see the whales passing through the channel here. Uh, they call it Lahaina Roads. But it, it's very, um, but Maui is, is, a, is another sort of unique uh, category. But, but Maui is more than likely, I would say, probably the most like California. Maui has the most transplants I think um, it feels that way, that live there and sort of go back and forth between um, Maui or Hawaii and the and mainland US. And so Maui is sort of, if you're looking for someone that's or somewhere that's sort of, you know, Hawaii light, that you're not gonna really have a great change in culture um, significantly, Maui is probably the, the most similar to mainland US. Um, and that's just because there's so many uh, mainlanders that have sort of established an outpost in Maui. There are a lot on Oahu, but Oahu's got a different flavor uh, that I'll get to here in when I talk about culture. So that's Maui. Maui's called the Valley Island, by the way. Haleakala is over here, and then you've got the, it's also shaped like a man. You've got the head, you've got the shoulders, shoulder, and the rest of it. So it's the Maui man, but this is the flat area right in the middle here. Kahului is where the airport is. You've got all this, it was a very big sugar plane, uh, sugar cane uh, foundation or uh, plantation for many, many years. They gave that up about mm, less than 10 years ago now. But Haleakala is a beautiful place to catch the sunrise, but Maui is really amazing, especially Kanapali. I love Kanapali. I love the west coast of Maui. Uh, it's really, really nice. But like I said, you don't really get a sense as much of culture in Maui that you do in um, in some of the other islands. It's probably the most like the most like mainland U.S. Okay, big big island. All right, big island is uh, is special. This is where uh, nine times out of ten, if you found a place in Hawaii that's like really cheap and it's like, oh my God, I can buy a, I can buy an acre of land for like $50,000, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do it here. Well, um, Big Island, it's, there's a lot of gotchas in that, in that regard because a lot of times there's uh, lava zones that you have to contend with, but um, it's called the Big Island for a reason. Obviously, it's the largest of all of the islands, and there's really two distinct um, regions. There's the, the Hilo side, and then there's the Kona side. And they do have some, they break down a little bit more. Uh, South Kona, uh, you got Waimea up here. There, you know, each of these areas have their sort of their own distinct personality, and every island sort of breaks it down as well. But really, the two big sides are you got the Kona side and the Hilo side, um, and you know, Waimea and South Kona. But, but really, Hilo is where uh, it's a pretty big populated area, and then Kona. I don't know actually if Hilo is more populous than Kona. I think they might be a pretty easy, even mix, but uh, at any rate, that's the big island. 
And then let's talk about the other lesser islands, meaning by population, Molokai. Uh, Molokai is called the Friendly Isle, and Molokai is actually probably most like Hawaii in that Molokai is um, also sort of, it's known as the Friendly Isle, but there's only 30,000 or less, I think, that, that, that populate on this island. And so they don't get a lot of outsiders. Uh, I've alluded to this in previous videos that I've posted. You know, when I land, when you land in, in Molokai and, you, and you're driving around town, I mean, you literally feel like everybody's looking at you because they just don't get a lot of outside visitors. So if you're a vendor, they're gonna know who you are as a vendor if you're there on a regular basis. If, but if you're a new person in town, uh, there even as a tourist, like you are gonna be popped on the radar very quickly. Uh, and the reason is, is, I mean, it's such a small little community. I mean, tiny, like I think one, there's, I mean, look at that. This, yeah, this is the, this is the, the, the downtown area here. So you drive through here and it, it yeah, it's the friendly aisle, but they want to be looking at you like, like, it, like it's, it's really kind of uh, unique when you, when you fly into there, but it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's, it's, um, has the west the west end over here, which is really a dry area. This is one. Of the, I think this is the longest beach in the islands here, Papahaku. Uh, it's uh, I think it's about three miles long, and you can get a deal on real estate over there. But there's nothing out here. Uh, there's no water. Um, last I heard, in that's public infrastructure water anyway. And so that's one of the challenges with West Maui is that there's no, or excuse me, West uh, West Molokai is that there's no water out there. Uh, the east side has got plenty, uh, but the west side does not. And that's been a, there's a whole political story about that. This is also uh, Kal uh, Kalapa uh, Kalapapa, excuse me, uh, where uh, Saint Damien, the famous uh, leper col colony. Uh, is or was and still actually still is there are still some people there uh, leper colony is not the correct term for it now it's Hansen's disease is the name of the name of the condition uh, but this is a, a beautiful place I'm, I've actually uh, taken a donk you know a mule they've got these mules that go down this uh, this I, I want to say it's like at least maybe a couple of thousand feet of a cliff on this side of, of Molokai it's so beautiful but you take these switchbacks and you um, down the Kalapapa Trail, and then the, and then you come along the beach, and then you come into the into the uh, the, the Hansen's disease um, uh, colony. Uh, you may remember there was a, a plane crash not too long, well, I don't know, five six years ago, uh, right off here off of the Kalapapa uh, uh, Airport, where sadly uh, it was very controversial. If you followed anything with. Uh, President Obama's birth certificate. The one lady that was allegedly, uh, apparently could validate it, passed away in, in a plane crash right off here. It's for you conspiracy theorists out there. Anyway, it was sad, tragedy, but anyway, I, 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 I digress. So this is Molokai, and then now let's talk about Lanai. This is the Oracle Island. Uh, Larry Ellison has bought 98% of this island. This island is really sort of like the ultra high end. If you're going to visit, I mean, Elon Musk has been here. Um, you know, this is where you get private jets that fly in. I mean, Larry Ellison is a billionaire. He's one of the most wealthiest men in the world. And uh, he actually owns this island, 98% of it. Now it's called the Pineapple Island, Lanai is. And uh, the Pineapple Island actually um, um, has it's got a couple of four seasons on it. Actually, I think the, the, the one is uh, closed down. The, there's only one four seasons on it. I think it's down, yeah, it's down here. Uh, the Manalay Bay uh, is what they call it. The four, season, four seasons at Manalay Bay, and it's really nice. Uh, I've actually uh, stayed there once before. They used to have this deal. It was $155 uh, a night for Kama Aina uh, back, way back when. Uh, that is no longer no longer the case. I, I looked at it not too long ago. It's like I don't know six hundred dollars a night now. If you uh, even with the Kamaaina discount, and then there was another one. There was another uh, uh, Four Seasons, but this one I believe it's closed. But maybe they're still open. I can't remember. Maybe oh maybe they still aren't. Yeah, maybe they are. I know they closed for a while, but they may have reopened. But 
anyway, I, this one is, but those are, that's, that's, that's it. Those two Four Seasons. And then there is one little uh, inn, the Lanai Inn. But again, this is also a small little community, but it is bigger than Molokai. Um, I think by, I think it's, I think it's got more, more people on it. Uh, but I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. But it's called the Pineapple Island because Dole, Isle, Dole Plantation used to, or Dole um, Fruit Company used to own all of these, all of these areas. And these are all old, I mean, this is all pineapple land. And so you, you fly in and you go over there and this entire area is just all pineapple, uh, you know, old pineapple plantations. And so... I mean, if you drank pineapple juice in the 60s or 70s, like it came from Lanai, like in your U.S. citizen. Uh, this is where Dole pineapple juice came from for decades, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. Uh, and that's why it's called the Pineapple Island. In fact, it used to be uh, that a lot of uh, kids would go, you know, high school kids, they would recruit high school kids to go over and pick pineapples in the summertime. And then, you know, that'd be a way for uh, kids to... To, to raise money, work in the summertime and get, you know, good experience and work hard and, and earn money. And uh, that was that way for many years. But it, no, it is no longer, uh, South America really is the source for most of the fruit in the United States anymore. There's hardly any production that comes out of the Hawaii, sadly, because of the Jones Act. But, um, so now it's primarily just a, a tourist island and it's really for the ultra high end, you know, like, seriously grade a you know four seasons you're paying seven eight hundred dollars a night uh kind of a deal or more and like i said larry ellison owns it and so it's um uh it's a but it's a beautiful it's a beautiful place so those are really the the main uh islands of 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 hawaii but each individual one if you're looking to buy each individual island has its own unique personality and um as a someone coming from the mainland uh, if you're looking to sort of come here and live and to work, uh, Oahu is going to be your best bet. If you're looking to come here and invest in a nice, beautiful vacation spot, uh, Kauai or Maui is going to be good. If you don't want a really heavy cultural change, Maui is probably your best bet. Uh, Big Island is going to have a lot of opportunities for uh, lower, lower uh, priced properties, but there's not a lot of uh, infrastructure and you also have to deal with the lava zones as well. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's sort of the high level of the differences in the islands. Okay, so those are the personalities of the islands. So next up, seven things that one tells you before you buy a home in the islands. Culture matters. And uh, Hawaii has its own unique style. It's often not seen or, or even recognized uh, by outsiders. And uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples. So Oahu uh, is the most populous island, but we really have sort of our own culture here. And I'll just say it this way. One of the things that you never or very rarely will hear or see in, on Oahu is someone honking their horn. People just don't honk their horn. And people are also very courteous, generally, if, they're, if you're a local, you're courteous when you drive. Like, it's just, hey, you know, come on over. You know, I'll slow down and let you in. I'll, you know, it's just a, it's a very different culture from the mainland. And, uh, but it's a, but we've got 900,000 people here, right? So it's a very populated island on Oahu, but it's very, there's a very sort of community sense of, uh, of uh, genteel and, and friendliness and amicableness generally like found in, in Oahu that, that I see having lived here for almost 15 years now. And um, so, but, but that's a unique culture. Uh, people are also very friendly, but one of the other things that you'll find is if you're not from here is that to really learn deeply about the culture, I like to say you're not going to sort of have even a glimpse of what the real culture is in Hawaii until you've really lived uh, in the islands for at least three years. And after three years, you'll start to get a glimpse of it. And I mean, I've been here 15 years. I feel like I've got a pretty good sense of, of all the different aspects of culture. But even then, I'm still, you know, I'm still not a, a Kanaka, you know, uh, Kama Aina. I'm not, I'm not from, not a, not a child of the land. And for all those of you military folks, and I was 
a military veteran. I'm a vet veteran myself, but you, you say, oh, well, my comma on a discount. I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things where like, you, you know, if you're just because you're here for a year or two, you're not a comma Ina by any stretch. Um, and so out of respect for the local culture, I, I always feel like it's good to be sensitive uh, to the local culture and to recognize and to own and to, to be real with the fact that, hey, you're not a, a, a cultural Hawaiian. Uh, you may have a Hawaiian driver's license, but there's a very big difference between someone who's Hawaiian and someone who has a Hawaiian driver's license. Maybe that's the best way to say it. And uh, Hawaiian people are amazing. I absolutely love the people here. I love uh, my community. Uh, but it is very different uh, in Oahu in that people are generally generally very kind and very very giving, but they don't they don't eas easily open up and let you into their world. And here's why. Um, just to be real, a lot of times what people will, uh, they'll move here, they'll live here for two to three years, they'll realize that Amazon Prime doesn't deliver the same day like it does in LA or, or Phoenix or something like that. And they'll say, I just can't take it anymore and they move. And so it's that two to three window, two to three year window where people will just say, nah, we're not gonna invest in the relationship with you because you really haven't proven that you've lived here or that you're vested in going to live here, even if you bought a house. And so that's one of those things that you sort of have to come in going, knowing, being full aware of. Now, again, there's all different sort of segments and, and components to that and different, and you'll be able to find your tribe. Everybody finds their tribe. But just as a, for, in my experience, I came here as a military member. My tribe was the military. Uh, and then all of my friends sort of left after I'm, I'd lived here for three or four years, all of my friends that I'd transferred here had sort of transferred out. And so then I realized, okay, I, I really need to start expanding my, my influence or my, my sphere. And it was then that I sort of started learning so many more things about the culture of, of the islands. And so um, that's one of the things. I will tell you though, some, it's so, some areas it's more blatant than others. Like Kauai is, you, it's very stratified between the locals and the visitors. And I don't know why, every time I'm on Kauai, I always seem to get like this ex massive blast to the face of like mainland tourists just on full blast because there's the roads are there are only two lane roads on Kauai and people are, I don't know why it's just weird on Kauai um, but that's not the locals that's the the visitors the tourists I don't know why I, every time I'm on Kauai that's the the vibe that I get. Maui is probably the most like, as I mentioned, uh, California, and again, that's just because you have so many people moving to Maui um, to buy a, a second home or a vacation home and, and, and live there. Uh, Oahu, though, because it's a, a professional, generally there's, you know, people move here and they work here uh, on Oahu. Um, generally, I mean, you obviously there's a lot of opportunities to invest on Oahu, but uh, it, it has that sort of on, only one unique sort of flavor that's not mainland. It's it's uniquely Hawaiian on Oahu, and it's it's I love it. It's it's really really good. So okay, anyway, so culture matters. All right, now let's get into the real estate piece. Some specific things about real estate. Now there's two different property classifications uh, in in Hawaii that you won't find very frequent in the uh, mainland U.S. that you'll find here, and they're leasehold and fee simple. Well, what are the difference between leasehold and fee simple? I've actually got uh, a handful of videos that I've sort of talked about on this subject, but one of the things that I like to say is that leasehold is good, uh, is good for investing, um, but fee simple is good for uh, residents, okay? Uh, if you're going to buy a leasehold, it is not a good idea to buy it and live in it. Uh, a leasehold, you want to be doing that in a manner that you can be making income, in my opinion, on a leasehold because it's a um, it's a depreciating asset. There's no other way to say it. And why is that? Well, um, again, there's a, there's a lot to unpack in the leasehold regime, but generally, a leasehold is a property that um, you know the structure is built on top of the land, and you have legacy landowners that have four or five generations had this, this 
plot of land in their in their family, and they collect lease payments to, to, for the privilege of you uh, li, li, owning a building on it. So that building, uh, you buy the building, but you're you're it, it's technically on the land that is being leased, and so you've got to pay for the building, and then you've also got to pay the lease to have the building on the land. And if that lease is ever uh, ended and the property owners or the family that owns that lease decides they want to do something else with it, then you're out of luck. And so, um, you know, there's a whole other section of it and I, I probably should do a, 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 an in-depth video on that just to help uh, without, you know, just, just specifically on that topic because it's pretty heavy one. And then Fee Simple is basically just a uh, straight up, you own the property you know, outright, you know, of course, after your mortgage, after your, after your bank is, has been satisfied, after that lien has been satisfied. So, um, so leaseholds, but because of all of the, the components of leaseholds, generally the property price or the, the price, the purchase price on leaseholds are generally much lower than fee simple because you've got a lot of, uh, components to it that make, you know, lending difficult, there's an you know uncertain future and off, oftentimes and so it's very lower entry lower cost of entry so people oftentimes will also see just like they'll see those one acre for you know twenty thousand dollars on the big island but it's in a lava field uh, and then they'll see like a thirty thousand dollar fifty thousand dollar condo in waikiki but it's only got like five years left on the lease uh, so it doesn't make sense to buy it and to live in it um, generally, it's going to be more something that you want to generate income off of. So, so that's a, that's the other piece. Now, in addition to do different pro property classifications to to muddy the water even more, there's actually two different systems of recording deeds, and uh, you've got the regular system, which is uh, if you if you study Hawaii real estate and you learn the way that. Um, uh, from the great Mahele, which is when uh, the King Kamehameha, he was the unifier of the islands, and then he had ali'i or princes that, which is essentially like nobility, that he he would um, give sections of each individual island to, and then underneath those underneath those those sections of island. Uh, there would be they would segment it out even more and gradually the, in the 1900s early 1900s um, they sort of started this this thing called the land court system and the land court system was effect, effectively a modern modernized system for recording your deeds you used a proper um, you know it, it's just a proper western style land court and um, for recording deeds but prior to that it was the regular system and so properties, because there is a significant amount of legal work that goes to convert it from the regular system to the land court system, a lot of times, and the deed is still recognized and it's still in the Hawaii State uh, Record, you know, Bureau of Land, um, it'll, it'll re remain in the, in the regular system and then that piece of land will just continue to go on and on in the regular system. But the land court system is newer and more efficient and um, you'll oftentimes see that, you know, so that's actually a good question to ask whenever you're looking at a property. Is it in the land court system or is it in the regular court system or the regular system? And I don't know why they call it the regular system, uh, but it's just what they call it. But the land court system is the newer version and most properties that have been deeded since 1900, in the early 1900s are in the land court system oftentimes or have been converted from the regular system into the land court system. And so, uh, that is the two different types of systems for recording deeds. A lot of people don't know that when they buy a home in Hawaii. Let's talk about pets. Pets still have to quarantine for up to 30 days. Uh, if they've not done a titer test for rabies, if they've not done all the different you know, loopholes that you have to jump through uh, to get your pets. So if you're moving to Hawaii, make sure you do this in advance. And I mean, it can be depending on, um, you know, if, you're, if your dog has been um, uh, vaccinated for rabies, uh, it can be a 60 to 90 day in advance process uh, for you to do this so your, so your pet doesn't have to quarantine. If you don't go through that process in advance, 
then whenever you arrive, if you don't have every T crossed and I dotted and not paperwork, your pet's gonna have to quarantine for 30 days. And there's been countless, I mean, they, there's an entire facility in the Halava Valley dedicated just to that. Um, but most folks these days, you see it less and less because they've got a five day program and they've got a uh, airport release program. And if you've done everything right in advance, uh, there is a, a release, and I, I'm happy to do that if you uh, reach out to me. I can, I'm more than happy to help point you in the right direction to some resources um, to help you with that. So that's number five. Uh, number six, Amazon Prime. A lot of people don't realize Amazon Prime is uh, not, uh, we don't have the same day. Now we are building, the, Amazon is building an Amazon warehouse. So maybe in a year or two, well, probably about 18 months or so, there'll be an Amazon Prime warehouse on Oahu and certain items will have this quick delivery like you guys on the mainland are so fortunate to have. Uh, but that's not here yet. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't even know if they've broken ground on it yet. I know the transaction was done a month or two ago. Uh, but anyway, they're putting a place right next to the airport and eventually it's going to happen. But something that's interesting is that today, if you go on Amazon, and let's say razors, you want to buy some Gillette razors on Amazon. Well, on the mainland, you just click it, boom, it's there probably the same afternoon or the next day, just for disposable razors. Well, because of the uh, Patriot Act and the, all the transportation requirements that came out of post 9-11, uh, you actually can't take razor blades on aircraft anymore. Well, all the Amazon stuff comes over on a UPS you know, aircraft, save some of their ground stuff that they do ship uh, via ocean, but most of it just comes over on airplane because it comes over on airplane because of that law that says you can't fly a blade in the US transport transportation system You can't order blades a lot of people don't realize that so you can't order blades and you also can't order lithium batteries or batteries um, There are ways to get them here. You have to they're treated as hazmat you got to go through well, you don't necessarily generally see it as a consumer but batteries, you cannot order batteries and you cannot order blades through Amazon Prime. And uh, that'll, that'll come and get you if you're not, uh, you know, if you're used to being able to just get something simple like that. Not a huge deal, but it's one of those things that nobody ever talks about. You don't realize it until you're actually here. So um, that's, that's one, other, one other thing. And then the last thing, and it's Halloween. Uh, it's, we're uh, less, than a, less than 10 days away from Halloween. But um, there are legends of supernatural beings throughout the islands. Uh, one of the biggest ones that you'll hear about are the Night Marchers. And the Night Marchers are allegedly uh, a, a group of, or, or a, you'll, the way that you can, and I actually get chicken skin just thinking about it because I've heard so many stories about them. But the legends of the Night Marchers essentially say they are ancient Hawaiian warriors who, or their spirits that have still maintained their connection with one another and they still have their, uh, their, um, you know, their posse. And you will see them, they march and they have drums. And I mean, I've heard firsthand accounts of people that have heard sounds of them on Molokai, uh, here on Oahu. Uh, in fact, allegedly the old Sears building or the old Sears at the, which is closed now, uh, they just closed, it was on the last Sears remaining, uh, was over at Windward Mall. And apparently the night marchers had like a, uh, a route that they marched through there. There was like a trail that went right through there. And apparently these night marchers, they get this, um, uh, they, 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 you know, they, they march. And you if you're ever awake at night, you'll actually see like, um, uh, uh, well, if you see them allegedly uh, in the, the mountains, and I've actually, it's crazy that the reason it freaks me out so much is because I believe I may have actually seen some once uh, in the mountains above uh, Makakilo on the, the west, or the eastern side of Makakilo, which when I, I first moved into Kapolei, it was wide open and I could see from my house. And um, I saw some night, something what appeared to be night marchers um, it was a string of torches and it was like just in the mountains and it was like a line of men walking down a trail with torches and I don't know if it was night marchers or not but it was uh, it definitely got my attention and I started doing some research about it and I found out about the real it's a real thing um, but you, your legend says that if you are 
out for some reason at night in the wilderness and you hear the beats of the drum and you see the, you know, the torches or something like that, you're supposed to like lay on the ground and close your eyes and like don't look at them because if you look at them, I, I don't know, something bad will happen. I, I can't remember like if you'll like die or you'll be paralyzed or I, I don't know, but you don't look at them. That's, that's the whole thing. If, you, if they're coming, you know. Now, granted, is there a little bit of cultural, uh, you know, yeah, there, there, is, it, is it real? Who knows, but I'll leave that to you. But it, the, the stories are very real. I feel like I may have actually perhaps seen something similar to that previously, and, and this was about 10 years ago. Um, but it's, it was fascinating. But anyway, and then you also have the Mini Hooney. And the Mini Hooney are, uh, you know, more of a jolly, uh, they are the ones that get things done. Um, and Mini Hooney, uh, they, they, they come overnight, you never see them, but things get done like really quickly. They're very industrious, elvish type creatures. So those are the, the Night Marchers and the Mini Hooney. So. Uh, all right, well, Melissa, thank you for sticking around. We actually have gone a little bit over by about 11 minutes. We're about 36 minutes in right now. But uh, I want to just give you your free gift. If you are buying a home in Hawaii, our brand new fall uh, 2021 buying guide has been posted at hpahomes.com slash buying. That's hpahomes.com slash buying. If you go to that site, uh, you can download for free, no charge. You can download our buyer's guide for fall of 2021 and a lot of it's packed with good information I think it's like 18 pages worth of uh, worth of information there and then also uh, if you do end up buying a house with me uh, mention that you watch this video I'll give you a five dollar off your five dollars five hundred dollars off of your closing costs um, in the form of a, a credit in the transaction uh, for you if you uh, if you watch this video and I uh, just mentioned that and we'll uh, we'll take care of you so anyway, hey, thank you so much. I hope this was valuable for you. Uh, always appreciate my audience. Have a beautiful day. Thank you always, and God bless.